I've sawed an inch off each end of that wall bow and I thought I'd investigate what the horn knocks were like because one of my pet hates is when the end of a bow is just tapered as if it's been done with a pencil sharpener and the horn knock just knocked on the end of it. Uh, you can see and you can imagine I was slightly horrified when I looked inside. The one on the left is a bow I made years ago and I sawed it in half as a sort of um, demonstration piece. It was only 50, 60 pound but you can see the nice curved tip of the wood completely fitting nicely filling the knock but um, the two off the wall bow are horrendous um, and if you look at the line where the string will bear on this one the string is barely pulling down onto the wood at all oh, I don't know in reality it pulls at this sort of angle but it's not good is it and this one's not vastly better the string pulling this way and as for the stringer groove that's pulling in thin air I've got a smaller diameter hole but it goes in deeper and the finished knock on the new knocks are much shorter than that I mean. Alright I've got the knocks redone and that gives you an idea of the the scale I mean the new knock is shorter more elegant it's slightly smaller diameter where the wood enters the knock. Right I've put new horn knocks on sawn an inch off each end uh, it's been heat treated of course, so it's a lot straighter. This string that was giving full grace is now just hanging slightly loose, so you can see it's a bit shorter. Let's have a tentative look at the tiller, because there's no point doing any of this work unless you re-tiller it how it should be tillered. You're just in danger of making it back the same shape as it used to be otherwise. Uh, I've taken a little bit off the tips in terms of thickness and width, but, but not a lot. Let's we'll have a look at it first. Right limbs definitely looking a little bit weaker, left limb stiffer, which is what we wanted, and it's effectively looking a bit stiff, uh, a bit weaker in the middle. Well, that would be because the outers are now a little bit stiffer, being an inch shorter. That's looking quite nice, actually. That's 95, and that left outer looks very chunky. And let's get down and. It looks very thick there, but that's just because there's a bit of a thin bit here, uh, which is nice because if that was weak before, now it's nearer the tip, it's effectively stiffer. I need to thin that out a bit. But the bend looks quite good. I'm just going to I'm going to put it to a hundred. Oh, that was that was ninety-five. There we go, hundred. That's about twenty-three. Yeah, I know it's not braced. I've proved the theory before by experimentation that as long as your string's not hanging down too low, the poundage and distance does work out very closely the same as it will when braced. The strain on the bow will be a bit more. But um, anyway, there we are, about 123, which implies I've now got some poundage to spare, which I can use to improve the tiller. The downside is that if I remove too much off the belly, I'll go through the heat treated area and hit an untreated area of wood which will effectively be a bit less stiff and there'll be a danger of creating a weak point. But what I can do is I can take a little bit off the width, tidy the width up and I can round the belly a bit. It's a bit blocky and rectangular. Uh, my mate said it was a bit uncomfortable in the hand. I mean, I, I tend to make them squarish or rectangular and then knock the corners off myself. So I'm not, I'm not a, a great believer in this heavily rounded belly, you know, that people think a warbow has. It's a, 
it's a sort of plump inflated square or inflated circle. But yeah, it's looking promising, isn't it?